This is Ozempic, a once weekly injection approved by the FDA to manage type 2 diabetes. Maybe you've heard the annoyingly catchy jingle. Or perhaps you've seen it in the news for another reason. Health, there's a promising new weight loss drug that's getting a lot of attention and not Semaglutide is the active ingredient in Ozempic and has been packaged under many different names with people calling it a miracle weight loss drug. Some of the world's elites like Elon Musk have been advocating its use and many more are rumored to be taking it. But how does it work? And is it really this miracle drug that people have been led to believe? Let's start with some context. Diabetes is a global epidemic, with an estimated 1 in 10 people suffering from it around the world. And by 2045, it's thought that 700 million people will have it. When we eat food, our blood sugar levels rise, and our pancreas produces something called insulin. Insulin then works to lower our blood sugar levels. But in a patient with diabetes, their pancreas either doesn't produce enough insulin, known as type 1 diabetes, or their body becomes resistant to the effects of insulin, known as type 2 diabetes. And in both cases, it leads to uncontrollably high blood sugar levels, which over time can cause some serious damage to the body. A major risk factor for developing diabetes is being overweight or obese. The two are very closely linked. For overweight individuals, your risk of developing type 2 diabetes is about 2.4 times higher. And for those who are obese, the risk is about six times higher. In fact, one of the leading recommendations for managing type 2 diabetes is weight loss. The problem is that it's often overlooked because it's just easier to directly control people's blood sugar levels using one of the many meds available. But it turns out there is one med that's pretty effective at doing both, and it mimics something that's already inside our body. Hormones. Hormones are the body's messengers. And when they're released, they travel all around the body and trigger specific actions. For example, when we eat, our body produces a bunch of hormones to help us break down our food and turn it into energy for ourselves. One of those hormones is called GLP-1. This is a sequence of amino acids that make up GLP-1, and this is semaglutide, the generic name for Ozempic. See the similarity? Semaglutide is made to mimic the GLP-1 our body already produces. Here's why. When we eat food, our intestines release GLP-1. GLP-1 then travels to different parts of our body and binds with GLP-1-specific receptors. So in the pancreas, we have these GLP-1-specific receptors, and when GLP-1 binds to it, it tells the pancreas to start producing insulin, Remember, that's the hormone that lowers blood sugar levels. So you could begin to see why scientists wanted to find ways to pharmacologically activate these GLP-1 receptors in the pancreas to artificially lower the blood sugar levels of diabetics. And that's what semaglutide, aka Ozempic, was approved for. It was found to be very effective at lowering the blood sugar levels in people with diabetes. When GLP-1 receptors are activated in our stomach, the rate of gastric emptying decreases, which means food moves through our digestive tract more slowly, hence we stay fuller for longer. And we have GLP receptors in the thalamus in our brain, which suppress hunger cravings. So very soon, people began noticing another effect when taking this GLP-1 agonist like semaglutide. Perhaps you can guess what it was. And you may lose weight. In the same one-year study, adults lost on average up to 12 pounds. Oh, up to 12 pounds. One major study on nearly 2,000 adults found that those taking semaglutide saw an average weight reduction of 15% when paired with a low-calorie diet and regular physical exercise, compared to a placebo group, which demonstrated a little over 2% reduction. And that level of effectiveness in reducing weight rivals results usually obtained following bariatric surgery, but without the surgery. So surely this is a good thing, right? Because the CDC published that being obese and overweight is associated with health risks like death, stroke, and coronary heart disease. So is this where the miracle in miracle drug comes from? Well, maybe if you're clinically obese, yes, but here's the problem. When a drug is prescribed by a doctor, the doctor will carefully weigh up the benefits versus the risks of that medication. Things like how much will this improve the quality of life for my patient and actually treat their condition versus perhaps the side effects or the financial cost of that med. There's a whole host of pros and cons and usually for a doctor to prescribe a med, they feel that the scales tip towards the pros and will outweigh the cons. But the issue we're seeing is that rich people who are neither diabetic or even obese can afford a private doctor to prescribe them Ozempic or other variations off label. So that means not for the indication of lowering blood sugar levels, but instead for the added side effect of losing some weight. And people are losing weight, and they're letting the world know. Jolo, you look thin. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ozempi? Yep. <laughs> I'm in shape because I run, avoid sugar, and do Ozempic. When I look around this room, I can't help but wonder, is Ozempic right for me? 
and in a world controlled by vanity and FOMO. The world we live in today, everybody wants to be skinny. A global online craze has led to everyone wanting a piece of the pie. In the last three years alone, Ozempic saw a 300% surge in drug prescriptions, meaning that diabetics that actually need this medication are now facing a shortage. To counter this, the FDA has approved a similar version of Ozempic called Wigovi, but specifically for weight loss. But even still, if you look at the indications for Wigovi, it's for adults who are classed as obese, or for adults who are overweight with a coexisting condition such as high blood pressure or type 2 diabetes. Obesity is measured using a body mass index, which is just a ratio of your weight to height. And depending on where you fall on that scale would then categorize you as being either underweight, overweight, obese. But the majority of people taking Mogovi don't fit into those two classifications either. People are being prescribed and taking these medications when they don't need to. My anti-aging doctor just hands it out to anybody, right? I didn't even know I was on it. A miracle weight loss drug would indicate that these meds have only pros and no cons. But these medications do have risks and they're just being ignored and not discussed. So here is why Ozempic and other semaglutide variants like Wigovi are not miracle drugs. Firstly, these drugs have side effects. The most common ones include nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. And these common side effects are sometimes so bad that people have to stop taking the medication altogether. Like a year ago, I tried it, okay. you know, it's like, and I was one of the people that felt like so sick and like couldn't like play with my son. I was so <laughs> skinny and I was just like, and you're like, okay, this isn't livable for me. But There's I also an increased risk for some more severe and life threatening side effects, including pancreatitis, kidney failure and hypoglycemia. I mean, half of the Ozempic commercial was spent eerily warning you of this. Stop taking Ozempic and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, itching, rash, or trouble breathing. Serious side effects may happen, including pancreatitis. Tell your doctor if you have diabetic retinopathy or vision changes. Taking Ozempic with a sulfonylurea or insulin may increase the risk for low blood sugar. Common side effects are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain, and constipation. Some side effects can lead to dehydration, which may worsen kidney problems. But with celebrities making comments like these... I mean, I think it's safe and healthy. Like, I think it's good for you. It's like taking vitamins. People fail to acknowledge the severity of these side effects and that they can even cause death. And secondly, what everyone is failing to understand is that once you stop taking this medication, you put the weight you lost right back on. The major study I mentioned earlier followed the same 2,000 adults once they stopped taking Ozempic, and it found that two thirds of the weight lost by the participants was regained within a year. And another study found that 40% of the total weight that is lost is from muscle, which could be further detrimental to individuals that stop taking this medication as they not only return back to their baseline weight, but actually regain the weight as fat in place of that lost muscle. And when we lose muscle, our metabolism slows down and we actually need less food to maintain our weight. So it makes it easier to put weight back on and harder to lose weight again in the future. It's this never ending cycle that's strategically planned out by Big Pharma to turn you into a lifelong customer. The world has put these drugs on a pedestal as part of an elitist cultural makeover to fit into society's unrealistic body ideals instead of an actual medical intervention for the sick that need it. Next time you see your favorite TikToker or celebrity talk about how Ozempic is a miracle drug, I want you to reconsider the word miracle. Anything that seems too good to be true usually is. Isaac Newton's third law states that for every action in nature, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And whether that reaction is the sick diabetic person that's missing out on their life-saving meds, or the teenage girl developing an eating disorder because she wants to look like her favorite model that is secretly taking Ozempic, or perhaps the life-threatening side effects or the weight regain when stopping the meds, whatever it is, think to yourself, is this really a miracle drug? The drug is being used to cover up a much deeper problem in society, and I think the real question should be, in the last 60 years, how has obesity more than tripled from 13 to 43% of the population? The world should really be focusing on how ultra processed food is making up 60% of an adult's diet and 69% of a child's diet. And it's accounting for 90% of added sugar we consume each day. To put that into perspective, that's 34 extra teaspoons of sugar per day for children and 22 teaspoons per day for adults. If someone is overweight and obese, it's not their fault. They're living in a toxic food environment, but taking a magic med is never going to change that. And selling a dream that it will is just wrong.
please seek advice from a registered health professional instead of the pseudoscientist gurus who claim to have all the answers online. I'll be leaving all the references that went into making this video in the description below. I'll also include some evidence-backed weight loss information from reputable sources if you wish to find out more. I hope you found this documentary informative. Until next time, and please subscribe to the channel.